well, David, this is amazing that I'm in his church um, tonight because David played a big role in my um, conversion. And just like that man, that Christian man, prayed for him, um, when I left my husband in 2000, um, I don't know, it was seven years ago, right, when Lynn Thompson became the prophet, I uh, heard about his pedophile, uh, pedophilia behavior, and I couldn't stay there. So I left, and David calls me, and um, he just told me, I can't believe you left. I just can't believe you left. And I was like, well, I can't either. God literally picked me up and took me out of there. It wasn't planned. It was something, though, that I wanted from the moment I, I went through that ceiling ordinance. I wanted out. I was trapped. But I knew I couldn't get out. And I'm going to go into some of those cohort, the coercions and the manip manipulations that could happen to us um, women and men, I believe, but especially the women, and what happens to cause us to stay there. Many people go, why don't you leave? Like, even when I was there, why don't you just leave? I mean, you're, you're capable, you're smart, you're educated, I'd gone to college. I mean, my mother had left when I was 15, and I ran from polygamy. I ran so fast, but I wanted to go back because of all these coercions. I'm going to touch on some of these. Does this light go on here? Yes. Is there a, is this a light? I don't know. I'll go on the bridge. Yeah. Hello. Please. Thank you. Um, I just, my eyesight's not the best. Good morning, the bright one. Okay, so um, thank you so much. So I'm going to kind of uh, start from my childhood. When I was very young, they started they start teaching you things um, from the like Dora said from the cradle, and my mom glamorized polygamy. My mother did. Um, she just made it look so beautiful, and and you know this is. Um, our privilege and it's like you get a best friend and um, so as a little girl I, I wanted it and then uh, they, they say you know a man is not a man until he has three or four wives so you want to to look for a man who can actually take you and exalt you to the highest degree of the, the kingdom of heaven and there's three degrees in the top degree and that's the highest degree. And so, as a little girl, I always wanted to marry a, an older man. Um, I remember my mom, I mean, Rulon Ara was the prophet, and I loved him. I just adored him. We worshiped him. He spoke in meeting, and we were trained. Um, I was three years, I remember going to church at three years old. We were trained to sit there and listen to his words. And when he spoke, the charismatic uh, energy, and he was angelic, and you just felt in love with him. And you knew he was a servant of the Most High God, and he spoke with such authority that I mean, you would never think that what they were teaching was false, because um, he was such a beautiful man. Also, I was, being super, I was being very abused, not sexually, but abused physically um, by my own father, which when you're that way, you're so afraid when you've been abused as a child. You have um, such fear of ever disappointing anybody. And so I would never even consider or think of not being a polygamist. But when I left, I ran away from it because of all the hurt and the abuse from my, from, um, my Pinesdale experience. It, there was a lot of uh, work. We were... We were literally work from the time we woke up five in the morning when we worked two hours to supply milk to the whole community and um, then we went to school at Pines Academy and I mean I love the teachers I loved everyone it was amazing but we were being indoctrinated and um, one of those 
experiences, I mean, it's like those seeds are planted and you just know it's true. One of the times I, I was read, we were going over the DMC and church history, um, and Athlene Allred read this, and it just stuck with me, and I knew I had to live with me. So it says, For behold, I reveal unto you a new and everlasting covenant. And if you abide not that covenant, then ye are damned. <laughs> and it just hit me, oh my gosh, I have to live this or I'm going to hell. Um, and it goes on to say, if you reject this covenant, um, you will not be uh, permitted to enter into my glory. For all who will have a blessing at my hand shall abide the law which was appointed for that blessing. They taught that. Every blessing given, you have to earn it, basically. You have to do something to earn that blessing. You have to live up to the privilege of having that blessing. It's a lot of work and a lot of pressure. Um, anyway, when I heard that, I knew I, I had to live polygamy or I'd be down. So when I left, I, I eventually ended up coming back because of the sin in my life. And I thought, I'm such a sinner. Um, at 21 years old, I gave my life to Jesus. And I was led back into polygamy because I heard a voice in my head. I didn't know the Bible was where you get truth. I didn't know the Bible was where I found uh, where God wanted me to go. I didn't know that. So I heard, hear a voice in my head, well, if you love me, will you live polygamy? And I hated it. I didn't want to live it. I was raised in it, and, and I saw the manipulation and the coercion. Well, if you want to overcome your selfishness, then you'll live it. Uh, all these little things started like leading me back, and I ended up going back and living that way. And another thing that happened, when I was eight, I was baptized. And I remember not really believing Joseph Smith was a prophet. Like something in my head said, what if he's not a prophet of God? What if this isn't true? And I told my mom, what if I don't believe? And she said, oh, just get up in church and you bear your testimony. And every time you bear your testimony, you're going to get a stronger testimony. Pretty soon you're going to believe it. You're going to, if, and sure enough, I bear, bore my testimony. I was terrified. I'm not a public speaker and I was terrified and all of a sudden this just burning hit me in my heart and it was just like, oh, I know it's true, you know? I mean, Satan can influence us with those feelings, but I didn't know that. I was eight years old and um, um, I'm going to go into also the buffeting of Satan issue. So when I was Married in the AUB, um, my husband, I thought I was just going to get married. I mean, it was my wedding day. I was so excited, and oh, they stripped me down naked. It was pretty, it was pretty intense. They told me to strip down. They do washing anointings, and then uh, you get ushered, like, oh, you go sit over there, you sit over there. So I got separated from my husband right away, and then... They tell me to do these, they take you in and, and tell you to do these blood oath covenants where you slit your throat. And when you slit your throat and uh, do a sign like you're going to cut your stomach open um, to spill the blood on the ground, um, if you ever divulge what happens in here. Like, and I'm like, oh my gosh, like, this is serious. Um, I mean, that's another chain that they, they wrap around. All these manipulations are chains that bind you in tightly. I was so afraid to ever talk about it um, or speak about what happened there. And I remember my husband pulled me aside after that, and he said, there actually are men put in place that, ha that do that for us. The, the, so this is serious. I mean, I was literally... Terrified. I mean, we can laugh about it now, right, David? But I was terrified of ever leaving, and I was going to hell. I was, uh, I would be blood atoned if I ever did leave. 
Um, and the buffetings of Satan in the GMC, I'm going to actually read this. This is another scripture. Um, it's in 132, and it says, But they shall be destroyed in the flesh and be delivered over to the buffetings of Satan if they ever basically break their covenants. So when I left, I was terrified. And this is not just me. This happens to women who leave. You are terrified, and you don't understand why, but you're terrified because you are breaking those covenants you made and you took covenants that you kind of would, would not do that. And so the manipulation is the, that there's damnation, there's hell, fire um, for eternity if you leave. And those grip you and, and they affect you for, for a lifetime. Um, you know, I'm just going to read a little scripture, John 10, 28. Uh, this, is, this is amazing because I read this when I actually started to um, come out and God was breaking those chains. And he said, I will give them eternal life. I realized it wasn't all these polygamous uh, ordinances um, and that no one can snatch me out of Jesus' hands. No one could snatch me out of his hands. So uh, God started to break um, off those chains little by little. Um, back to the polygamist coercion, you know, they tell you that if you leave, you're going to be a servant to your husband. My husband told me this. If I ever left, I would be a servant for eternity to my husband and his wife's. I would be their slave, and the, the biggest hell of that is you, you'd be watching them in glory and uh, in happiness with their babies and all their children forever, but you're just a servant to them. Um, that, that scared me. That's really hard to imagine me serving um, my husband, and he said, you will never be out of my power. Um, you will be, I mean, I will, no matter what you do or go anywhere, you'll never be out of my dominion. I will always have control over you. Which at the time I was like, well, great, I'm married to you, you know. But then when you're leaving, you're terrified to think that's true. Um, and you, anyway, um, another So you're taught um, but that this is the way to become God. And Brigham Young actually teaches that, that um, the only people that can become gods are those who live polygamy. And you're, you're trained up to believe that becoming a god is the ultimate. It's almost like you're, you know, it's all about you instead of Jesus. So you're trained to, to, um, to be like in all this fear and manipulation. And is that how God works? Is that how God uh, woos us to him through all this uh, manipulation tactics? Um, Brigham Young also said, I'm going to read this quote. The women are entitled to salvation if they live according to the word that is given to them and if their husbands are good men, polygamists, and they are obedient to them, they are entitled to certain blessings and they will have the privilege of receiving certain blessings that they cannot receive unless they are sealed to men who will be exalted. Again, our salvation was bound up in a man. We were trained from a, a you know, very young to want to be polygamist. Um, uh, another quote from Brigham Young says, if we really wanted to be happy, we would be bearing children 
and that we'd have that privilege to bear children for all eternity. Um, that actually terrified me because, I mean, I loved having my kids, but it's a lot of work. <laughs> Especially when you do it as a single mom. A lot of polygamous women are like single mom. I didn't have the support of a husband. Um, and so thinking of doing that for eternity is exhausting, especially when your husband says you have to do it every year. The, in eternity, we had to have a baby every year. And I said, well, how long's gestation? <laughs> oh, it's nine months. And I'm like, I get three months off for eternity. Every three months I'm pregnant again. And I believed him. And it's just like, okay, well, this is what's gonna make me happy. They train you and condition you that this is all that our life is about. And that God himself did this. Adam was God. We were taught Adam is God. He had multiple wives in heaven. That his, um, one of his wives came down, her name was Eve, and they had to bring all those spirit children down. And that's why we have children today, is to bring those children, to supply bodies for those children. And it was so amazing realizing that it was God that created it us in the womb. We, we didn't have, um, the, you know, just another lie that I, that I had believed. Um, Brigham Young had 56 plural wives. And he said, the founder of the Roman Empire, the Roman Empires, or Roman Empire were robbers and women stealers and made laws favoring monogamy. And that monogamy itself is the fruitful source of prostitution and whoredom. Yet it was God himself who instituted monogamy. Some polygamous groups are actually threatened with blood atonement if they don't obey. Um, like I said, that, that happened to me. We were taught that there are some sins that Jesus can't that he, 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 some sins at, that atonement can't cover. Murder and adultery were unforgivable sins. Much of today's polygamy doctrine came from Brigham Young, as did the blood atonement idea. In 1857, he gave a sermon describing the necessity of blood atonement, which is just legalized murder. He asked, Will you love your brother and sister when you have committed a sin that cannot be atoned for without the shedding of their blood? Will you love that man or woman well enough to atone for their, or to shed their blood? A very powerful manipulate, uh, mo excuse me, manipulation and threat to a female who questions the doctrine of polygamy is that she could be blood atoned if she refused marriage. The bottom line is that polygamy is not natural. Monogamy was instituted by God and affirmed by Jesus. Not committing adultery is part of God's Ten Commandments. A woman does not naturally want to share her husband with other women. We have been given, every woman has been given an innate desire to be jealous for that relationship. And that's a righteous jealousy. It's a righteous zeal. And I, I looked that up in the um, jealousy and the, um, the vine strong concordance, and I was just shocked to find out it, it is a righteous zeal. And God has it for us too. Um, that just so liberating. Yeah, polygamy forces women to um, forces them to, to live polygamy and then condemns her when she experiences jealousies. In, in order for them to successfully manipulate her into this lifestyle, they must coerce and manipulate. This is how God um, uh, does things. They fear uh, guilt, obligation, and shame. They threaten with God's wrath and Satan's attacks. But when God draws people to him, he uses love, grace, patience, long-suffering, 
um, hope and promises and comfort. Hope was a big one for me. Hope. Hope that maybe I wasn't eternally damned if I chose a life out of polygamy. Saying yes as a result of coercion and manipulation is not free choice. Thank you for this um, opportunity of being here, and it's so nice. I, you know, um, three years ago, I became a Christian, and two years ago, uh, I, last year I was baptized. Last summer, God put it on my heart that I'd be coming to 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 Montana to speak, and it's just amazing how God. Uh, put stuff on your heart and praying for Pinesdale. I love Pinesdale. I love the people there. I grew up there. They're my family. Um, I mean, actually, now I have the, the Christians that are my family, but they still, I have a heart for them. I know the pain and suffering the women go through, the neglect, um, and no one needs to live in that kind of a lifestyle when you can be free in Christ. Thank you. Okay, so that concludes uh, tonight's sessions. Uh, we will meet again tomorrow at 9.30. Um, doors will be open at 9 o'clock. Um, wow. Um, I know a lot. Tonight I know a lot more. Um, It is for freedom that Christ has set us free. Do not be enslaved any longer to the law. Christ's atonement was sufficient. Amen. There need be no more bloodshed. There is no blood that is any more sufficient than his. And that's because he was the perfect man. He was the, at one and the same time, fully God and fully man. And he paid the price. One of the last words that he said is to tell us dying. It is finished. It is accomplished. The price has been paid. Nothing is owing. And if that were all he had done, that would be enough. But it wasn't all that he did. Because he rose again. He conquered death. He ascended. And he is at the Father's right hand. Paul tells us in the book of 1 Timothy that he is our intercessor. Yes. That he is always making intercession. The devil is the accuser and the deceiver and he comes before the throne of God and casts aspersions on us and Christ says that has been paid for. Yeah. That has been covered. That has been paid for. I took that cost. I took that price. That is is amazing, marvelous, and wonderful grace that God would pay the price to satisfy His own justice. Father, I thank You for the freedom that You have given us. That in Christ, we have the freedom to come boldly before the, gro the throne of grace in our time of need. Father, you have gifted us with life everlasting. Not because of our work, not because of our value, not because of our ability, 
to satisfy the measure of the law. For if righteousness could be attained through the law, then Christ has died in vain. I thank you, Father, for the grace that covers us. I ask, Father, as we go tonight, that we would consider well the things that we have heard tonight, those things that would sink deep into our spirits, those things upon which we would ponder. Father, that we would look in the light of your word, that, Father, you would help us. That, Father, we might show love. Father, the, your word says in John 3, that you did not send your son into the world to condemn the world, but that through him the world might be saved. And any who would believe in him would be saved. But that any that does not stands condemned already. I thank you, Father, that you have given us the right to be called the children of God. What a privilege to be co-heirs with Jesus Christ. I ask your blessing on those that are here tonight. Father, that as we go our separate ways, that you would just keep your hand upon us, that you would deliver us safely to our homes, that, Father, you would bring us together again tomorrow. I just ask, Father, that we might know more of your love each and every day. We pray these things in the mighty the precious name of Yeshua HaMashiach, yes. Jesus the Messiah. Amen. Amen. You are dismissed.